Let's talk about the church a little bit. Let's do it. So now you're the lead pastor of the church, yeah. and you're kind of transitioning in, taking over the leadership. Yes, Tom's kind of fading back. Tom has some other ministries I know that, yeah. that he's working on. So mm -hmm. what do you feel like? I know you just had a, a here in Obey conference. Here in Obey what, conference. What, what is the fire? What do you see the vision for the church in the city of East Texas and Longview? I know you all have a big outreach, and you all do a lot of things besides right. just show up on Sundays. So what, what yeah. is, what do you feel like God's putting on your heart to minister to the people of Longview, the lost people, the church people, the people here? Uh, right. What are some things that you're seeing uh, God opening up for you as far as your ministry, preaching, teaching, uh, oh, you know, touching people? You know, uh, when it, I, I think when it comes to the church, we're you know we're getting in that we're in that era and the see I wouldn't even call it a season. Honestly, I, I, seasons come and they go, but I think that we're in an, an era now. Uh, you have to have power. Yes. It with without power, without the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, the, the church will fade away. Yeah, I and, like what John John Wimber from the '80s he called it power evangelism. Yeah. And people, I think people are turned off. I, I call it churchianity. Yeah, that's good. And yeah. I, I think people are so turned off by yeah. a sermon with no power, with right. no anointing. With It's just, you know, uh, Corinthians says the letter killeth, mm -hmm. but the spirit gives, gives life. life yeah. And uh, I think we have to have that spiritual anointing on the messages and the Holy Spirit needs to be present in our services. No doubt. If not, what we're doing is in vain. Right. And I think it's so important. I think right now in this seat, I wouldn't even call it a season. I'd call it an era. I think that in order for your church to grow, church to be healthy and church to be, you're going to have to have the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That the, the power, powerless Christianity, or I guess a powerless church is, is going to fade away. Yes. But at the end, we just talked about in the here and obey conference actually is that there has to be a genuine love for people again. Hmm. In the yeah. in you know in the in the last days, which I'm not saying we're in the last days. Although if you're a believer, you know, they've been saying that we're in the Getting last closer. days since Peter and Paul. <laughs> yeah. You know, Peter and Paul were talking about them in the last days. Yeah. I think everything's the last days since Jesus is going to be in heaven. Uh, but in the last days, the heart will grow cold. Yeah, we're and I think that. I think Christ, as believers, as Christians, we talk about it here a lot because it's so important hmm. they, to to make war on anything that interferes with your love for people. Yes. I, I think that a church that genuinely loves people, God can trust with power. I think yeah. that uh, without genuine, the genuine love of God, power is just a manipulation tool. Yeah. And I think that God is looking for a group, even just a man. That yeah. is genuinely in love with people. I love the scriptures where it says many times over that Jesus was moved with compassion, moved with compassion, and He healed the sick. Yeah, you know, He ministered to the needs of the people. Right. So you can't, you can have that power anointing, you know, but you right. need to have the compassion and the love to go along with it. To, no doubt. You know, you want to help these people out. And so, I say, I say it a lot here too. I mean. Jesus didn't heal people because he wanted to make a name for himself. Jesus often refrained from the crowd. Jesus often, yeah. he loved the 12 and mm -hmm. tolerated the crowd. The crowd's fickle. Mm -hmm. 12, the twelve's consistent. I think that Jesus didn't, we even see it. I mean, this, the, John the Baptist baptizes Jesus. Jesus comes out of the water. The Holy Spirit sends on like a dove. The voice of God comes out, says, hey, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And now if anyone's capitalizing a moment, <laughs> that's the moment to capitalize. I mean, yeah. like, this is like, all right, put my name in lights, set it up. I've been telling y'all, this is this is who I am. I, that's it's your, new Facebook. That's your new Facebook post. It's the new it? Facebook. Yes. I mean, it's the post, yeah. it's the Facebook, it's the yeah. ad. But yeah. Jesus doesn't do, what does he do? He no. refrains to the wilderness. wilderness. Why? Because Jesus wasn't making a name for himself. Oftentimes he heals people and tells them, hey, don't tell nobody. Yeah. And so I think that power without love is just manipulation. 
Mm-hmm. And I think God is, I think God is just the same way that we're seeing in our world today, that there's a, like a great divide. Mm. There's a great divide even coming to the church. Absolutely. There's a great divide. And you are either going to be on the side that is so madly in love with people that God trusts you with his power. Mm-hmm. Or you're not madly yeah. in love with people and your heart's grown cold. Yeah. And you're seeking revival as a lack of discipline. I think that's huge right now. But yeah. I think a lot of church leaders that just seek revival because it's the easier route. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm just being honest. That like, yeah, no. man, we want revival. I'll just get Jesus. Yeah. If Jesus shows up, he heals. If Jesus shows up, he yeah. moves. If Jesus shows up, things happen. I but I, th- I think the church that has kind of created revival to be their God is going to fall mm-hmm. away too. Um, yeah. And I think doctrinally, you see churches so much, you know, the traditional church or the church walls and whatever name you put on it, yeah. you see splitting, mm-hmm. you know, they, I call it the apostate church, people that are departed from the scriptures. Right. They can't tell you what a woman is. Right. They can't, t- they won't define or they're scared to define culturally to go against culture. Right. You know, a marriage is between man and a woman. Right. You know, we're going to ordain the alphabet people to preach in our pulpits uh, right. and, and just on and on and on. And I mean, we should love those people and, sure. uh, and reach out to them. But, you know, at the same time, we have to speak the truth in love. We can't right. just let them continue on. And I love what you talk about with, you know, Jesus presence. And, is, uh, you know, I, I go to a scripture a lot, Judges six thirteen. it mm-hmm. says, if God be with us, mm-hmm. You know, we say God is with us. Mm-hmm. If God be with us, you know, where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of? Yeah. So in the, really in the Jewish mindset, you know, the presence of God, you know, they couldn't separate that from God working, God performing, right. God healing the brokenhearted or doing something miraculous. It's not in the natural. And right. when Jesus, uh, Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. He used those same four words. Mm-hmm. He says, you know, we know you're a teacher sent from God for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. Right. And you know, follow it on to Acts 10, 38. Mm-hmm. Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were sick and oppressed to the devil for God was with him. Yeah. And I think God really wants to be with the church. He wants to have a relationship. You know, he wants to abide his presence, his Holy Spirit and the church and, and do something. And, and I think it's so sad that many people's experience with God and they've been turned off by religion. Uh, you probably see this a lot as the lead yeah. pastor. You know, they come in hurt. They've been damaged, you know. Yeah. Someone's condemned them. Maybe they've been divorced or maybe they've lived in sin for a period of time instead of, yeah. you know, bringing them in and it says, Jesus, Jesus was a friend of sinners. That's right. You know, there was something about Jesus. Sinners were attracted to him. Yeah. And I think most churches, unfortunately, you know, Jesus, the sinners are not attracted to the church right. by and far the, the majority of them. And it's heartbreaking. I, I told my, I told the church life reason not too long ago. I said that God was attracted to sinners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I said, if you want God's presence in our church, get more sinners in the room. Yeah. You know, Love if it. we get more sinners in here and God can show himself strong. Yeah. I think oftentimes the church is, just, you know, the religious gathering to tickle the fancy yeah uh when that's really not it but one thing so, that I, I love about the church is the church was god's <clears throat> idea yes it, it's not going away it's not it's it's going to get better it's going to get brighter yeah. we're going to be more effective and we're going to be we will be the answer to the world mm-hmm. and we just got to get there yeah so, amen. Yeah. amen well i've enjoyed our conversation absolutely uh, brian i appreciate it um if you don't mind um, would you just kind of pray us out here, pray for the, you know, your, the church, the ministry Absolutely. here and for the people in East Texas. And we're definitely going to be putting up on our description page, uh, links that you can get in contact with Brian. If you have any questions or you can contact, uh, Lightbridge, uh, Christian center. And, um, well, yeah, we'll close with that brother. Absolutely. 
Father, we thank you for every person listening, whether they're in the living room or the kitchen, God, or driving in their car, that you are the God who is everywhere. You're not confined to the four walls of a church, that you're not confined to planning center, a time specifically allocated on a weekend, but God, that you can encounter and meet us anywhere that we are. And that if you would cry out to God and you need him, that he would meet you right in your car, right in your living room, right in the kitchen today. And so Father, I just thank you for anybody that's listening today to have a real, authentic, true, powerful encounter, a life-changing turnaround situation yeah. to yeah, meet God. with them today, God. We just send angels to encamp around about all of our listeners, all of across yeah. our city, from government to st- from government to prisons, God, that you would protect us and keep us. And God, I just pray for every person underneath the sound that is listening today, God, that their ears will be unlocked to hear heaven. God, that you don't need another YouTube video, a podcast or a sermon, but you have a direct line into the Holy Spirit. And I just pray that be a reality for every believer, every every person in this in this city, God, that their ears would be unlocked to hear God, that their, their hearts would be full of courage to respond in complete and total obedience. And God, wherever they are today, I just pray a blessing over you. I pray angels to keep you. And I thank you that that there is a turnaround. I don't know who needs to hear this today, but there's light at the end of the tunnel and that you're doing better than you think you are. And I just thank you, God, that you are turning all things Mm. for our good and that you're working it according to your purpose in Christ. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. you. Thanks for having me. Yes. Thank you.